How's it going everybody? It's Warren. Welcome back to the channel. As it stands right now in the MCU, there are technically no Avengers. The Avengers as a team right now is no more. Avengers Endgame was the highest grossing film, not just out of all the Marvel movies, but the highest grossing film of all time. And in that movie, we said goodbye to many of our favorite Avengers. And that left open many spots for the new Avengers team. Now, given the Phase 4 slate that was revealed and all of the movies that we have coming up, Thor Love and Thunder, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, the WandaVision series, etc., and based off of everything that we know about Phase 5, we can pretty much determine what the new Avengers team is going to be. Of course, Marvel will throw in some outliers and new people, but for the most part, we know the lineup. And now it appears that when the Avengers finally do come back together and unite to fight one villain, we apparently know who that villain is going to be. And that villain, the villain of the next Avengers film is going to be Kang the Conqueror, and we have learned quite a bit on how Kang is going to be introduced into the MCU, as well as the effect that he's going to have on the future of the MCU and some specific characters. And having Kang show up to be the next villain after Avengers Endgame and after Thanos was seemingly the plan the whole entire time. So in this video, I'll break down three things. One is the report that Kang is going to be introduced into the MCU and how and when. Two is how the MCU has actually built up Kang's introduction through Avengers Endgame. And three, what effect his introduction will have for the future of the MCU. If you're new, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things related to the MCU. And I'm still giving away an Xbox One and PS4. All you have to do to enter is subscribe with notifications turned on. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts and favorite superhero or villain. I'm picking a winner at 550,000 subscribers. Now, when it comes to the next few phases of the MCU, we know that Galactus and Doctor Doom are said to be the next big bads. But much like Thanos was built up, Galactus and Doctor Doom are going to have to be built up as well. Thanos took 10 years to build up until he a officially made his appearance in the MCU. The same thing is going to happen for Galactus and Doctor Doom. So there's definitely going to be villains in between. We had Loki in the first Avengers film and then we had Ultron in Age of Ultron. So for the next Avengers film, there's going to be a villain that isn't Galactus or Doctor Doom. According to reports, it's going to be Kang the Conqueror. And according to said reports, he is going to be introduced in the Loki series. I'm gonna burn this place to the ground. Now, according to the Loki teaser that we got, that was part of the three part teaser that Disney Plus released during the Super Bowl, Loki is going to run into the TVA, the Time Variance Authority. The Time Variance Authority is responsible for keeping timelines and different realities in check. When one timeline or when one person in a certain timeline starts to affect other universes and other timelines and threatens them, it is the responsibility of the Time Variance Authority to eliminate this individual or even eliminate the timeline. So we clearly know that Loki is going to be jumping around different timelines. That's why he's in the custody of the TVA. And there's another person that the TVA has run into many different times, and that is Kang the Conqueror and his armies. Now we know the Loki series is going to directly tie into the MCU films. And according to Daniel Richman or Daniel RPK, Loki is going to introduce Kang the Conqueror. Kang is originally from thousands of years in the future, the 31st century to be exact. Originally appearing in Fantastic Four number 19 in 1963, Kang is a scholar who becomes fascinated with time travel, mostly due to the fact that one of his ancestors is Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic of the Fantastic Four. Before deeming himself Kang the Conqueror, his real name was Nathaniel Richards, and Nathaniel ends up stumbling across a time travel device. He uses the device to go back in time to ancient Egypt. There, he dubs himself Pharaoh Ramatut, and he ends up being defeated by a time-traveling Fantastic Four. In his defeat, he seeks revenge on the Fantastic Four, and he gathers together a wide array of time travel technology and weaponry, and seeks out to conquer the multiverse, deeming himself Kang the Conqueror. For a full breakdown on Kang's full story, you can check out a video I did in the link up above. So, Kang is clearly associated with time travel in a very big way, which makes the Loki series a perfect time to officially introduce Kang into the MCU. Loki is going to be jumping through multiple different points in time throughout the series, and the TVA is going to be looking for him, and apparently, they capture him. And according to Daniel RPK, the TVA is also going to run into Kang. This is something that has happened many different times in the comics, however, the TVA weren't exactly successful at stopping Kang, because they're not really that good at their job, which means Loki is most likely going to escape as well, so Loki and Kang could even end up teaming up. 
So the Loki series, according to Daniel RPK, is when Kang will officially be introduced. However, we could see Kang the Conqueror in the MCU a little bit earlier. He could show up in The Eternals. Now, not much is really known about the plot of The Eternals. However, we do know a few big details. And one of these major details is that on the set of The Eternals, they are building Ishtar's Gate, which is the north entrance to the city of Babylon. Now, Babylon existed in the same time of ancient Egypt. And as I mentioned, Kang was Ramatut, the pharaoh of ancient Egypt for a long time. So it is very possible that while the Eternals are in ancient Egypt, we could see a pharaoh by the name of Ramatut, aka Kang. And this could be his very first appearance and setup in the MCU. If this happens, that means we're going to see Kang the Conqueror in the MCU for the very first time this year, 2020 on November 6th. Now, how does Kang the Conqueror tie into the MCU as it currently stands? Well, as it turns out, Avengers Endgame set up Kang the Conqueror's debut perfectly. Avengers Endgame had a very specific type of time travel. The time travel rules that Avengers Endgame abide by are the same rules that Kang the Conqueror's time travel abides by, and that is a multiverse or infinite alternate universe's time travel. A time travel in where, as the Hulk explained it, if you change the past, it doesn't affect the future. It simply creates an alternate timeline. So, one connection is already there. The Avengers use the same type of time travel that Kang the Conqueror uses. And if you recall, in Avengers Endgame, Tony Stark said it himself, you mess with time, it tends to mess back. And then we have Loki, he escaped with the Tesseract which immediately created an alternate timeline. Another connection. And then there's the fact that Kang is basically the king of time travel. There are many multiple versions of Kang in different realities. And Kang travels throughout time conquering different realities, and the Avengers probably messed up his plan a little bit. In fact, Loki escaping with the Tesseract alone could probably put a halt in some of his plans. Not to mention, Tony Stark took the Tesseract from Camp Lehigh in 1970 when him and Captain America went back in time. Another change in history that could somehow have gotten in the way of some of Kang's plans. So Kang, at some point, will most likely catch on to what the Avengers have done, and he'll want to undo it, and he'll also want to take out the Avengers so they can't do it again. But if we dive into Kang's backstory, we can see how Kang arriving will also set the arrival for some other characters to enter the MCU. As I mentioned in the beginning, Kang's ancestor is Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic of the Fantastic Four. However, at one point in time, there was a comic that changed this and said he was an ancestor of Doctor Doom. Now, Doctor Doom has been reported to be one of the next big bad villains. So Kang, coming in to be the villain for Avengers 5 in the MCU could set up the arrival of Doctor Doom and the Fantastic Four. And it works the other way around too. If he's an ancestor of Reed Richards that introduces the Fantastic Four, therefore introducing Doctor Doom. Now this setup for the Fantastic Four is very, very likely. Avengers 5 and Kang's debut will most likely be at the end of Phase 5 or in Phase 6. This is around the exact same time that the Fantastic Four are suspected to make their debut in the MCU. We know that they're going to be coming before the X-Men because Kevin Feige has mentioned this before in the past, and Kevin Feige did name drop them at San Diego Comic-Con in 2019, which means they are coming relatively soon. This means that the Avengers could work with the Fantastic Four to take on Kang or the Fantastic Four could be brought in right after Avengers 5. And then after Avengers 5, there is something else that Kang sets up, the Young Avengers. There is a version of Kang, a young version of Nathaniel Richards, who goes on to become Iron Lad. However, the young Nathaniel Richards does not align himself with Kang the Conqueror, and instead he sort of becomes the next Iron Man. He becomes Iron Lad, and he forms the Young Avengers. And from there, they fight Kang. Now, if you look at everything that's happened in the MCU recently, the Young Avengers have been set up, quite obviously. We have Kate Bishop coming to the MCU to take on the mantle of Hawkeye, Cassie Lang, Scott Lang's daughter, is set up to be Stature, and then you have Wiccan and Speed, the twin boys of Wanda and Vision, and they're already confirmed to be coming to the MCU based off of the trailers that we got in for WandaVision. But then you have Harley Keener, the little boy from Iron Man 3. As you probably know, he was at Tony Stark's funeral at the end of Avengers Endgame. Now Marvel does everything for a reason, and it seems like there was a bigger purpose for Harley being at the funeral for Tony Stark, especially since we haven't heard from him since Iron Man 3. It's widely anticipated that he is going to go on to become Iron Lad, so it seems like the MCU may tweak just a little bit his name. But Harley Keener could be a future King the Conqueror, and Harley Keener could go on to find this out, take up the mantle of Iron Man becoming Iron Lad, and form the Young Avengers. The Young Avengers are already confirmed to be coming to the MCU at some point in time, and we know that they're not going to replace Iron Man anytime soon, so the next best thing is Iron Lad. 
This will commemorate Iron Man, but it won't replace him as to make his death less meaningful. Instead, it will be in memory of him. But Iron Lad's future is to become Kang the Conqueror, and eventually, he does end up becoming Kang. Even after defeating Kang, he realizes that the only way for everybody to survive is for him to eventually accept his fate. So, he ends up becoming Kang the Conqueror. And this is where the future of the MCU is heading. According to Daniel RPK, Kang the Conqueror is going to be introduced in the Loki series, and from there, we'll see him become a major villain. Let me know what you think about Kang's debut in the comments down below. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe with notifications turned on to stay up to date on everything relating to the MCU and so you can enter my giveaway for a chance to win an Xbox One or a PS4. I'm picking a winner at 550,000 subscribers. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.